What's going on, everybody? Liam O'Reilly, Vermont Economic Realtor. Hope you're doing well. The Northwestern Vermont Board of Realtors just came out with their January stats. We're going to go over those today and what that means for you as a buyer or seller in this Vermont housing market. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about what I am experiencing as a realtor, as somebody who's interacting with buyers and sellers on a daily basis uh, here in the Vermont housing market. And what I'm experiencing is Things are, things are much slower, especially than, than they were last year, but I would say they're even a little bit slower than they were leading up to 2023. Um, you know, and really over the past 15 days is, is, where, is where I've noticed it. Um, homes are sitting for longer on the sell side. Last year, you could list your home, you could have one photo. If it was in the right location, you'd still have 20 showings, 10 offers, and you'd be, you'd be home free. Uh, now, that's not the case. Now, homes that need a little bit of work are sitting for longer, especially if they're overpriced. Homes that are uh, that are turnkey, some turnkey homes that I think are pretty accurately priced are sitting for longer than expected. You know, the whole put your home on the market and sell it in a weekend, that does happen. It does still happen today, but it's less likely than before. So, you know, that, that's kind of what I'm experiencing is, is really a, a big slowdown. And, you know, we're seeing price increase decreases apro- across the board. There's less multiple offer situations, not to say that there's none, because there, there certainly are some multiple offer situations still happening. If the property is priced correctly, if it's desirable, especially in the lower end of the price range, um, you know, there, there are multiple offers, but Sellers looking to get top dollar and, and really stretching the listing their home at the top of the range of, of what it's worth, right? So if your if your home's worth between let's say four seventy five and five hundred, you list it for five hundred instead of four seventy five. You know that might be a little bit too much for for the market right now, and your home might sit on the market and and not sell on a weekend like they have been over the past few years. That's, that's what I'm seeing right now here in February, but let's look at the data from January. So January stats here, median sales price up 8.1%. You see right in the middle of your screen there. Uh, if you look at the green line, so the, that's the monthly data from 2022 and then further, further back, the median sales price is down slightly from its peak in spring, summer 2022. Uh, but you know it's a pretty normal thing if we look at the monthly data in past years it it excuse me the monthly sales price fluctuates on a month to month basis so you know having having a slight decrease one month as we saw in December um, doesn't mean that things won't tick tick back up the next month like we see here in January and they possibly could even go higher as we move into the spring and summer we'll just have to see how that market reacts um, some big components. This is for all properties, by the way, you see at the top. So this is condos and single family homes. A lot of the charts above, uh, above this, we're on page 14 of 14, sh- uh, show different charts if it's condo or single family home, not this. This is for all properties combined, which I thought was a good thing to look at to give us a, a general idea of the market. So percentage of original price received, we're now at 98.8% down 2% year over year. And this is consistent with what I'm seeing in the housing market. Homes are sitting for a little bit longer. Sellers are more willing to negotiate on price, but still, you know, if you're a seller right now, in my opinion, the best thing for you to do is to list your home on the more aggressive side. Not not asking for too much, but you know, list it at the bottom end of that price range and try to take advantage of these multiple offer situations while they're still going on out here, right? So in that previous example that I mentioned earlier on in this video, you want to list, if your home is worth somewhere between 475 and 500, you want to list it for 475. Try to generate interest around that price range and around your property and try to get two, three, four offers that will bid the price up to 500, maybe more, and have contingencies that are favorable to you as a seller. You know, if you overprice your property around, you know, in in this example, if you were listed at 500 or maybe even higher, 515, 525, somewhere in that range, 
then your property is going to sit on the market for longer. You're likely going to receive offers that are under ask price, under list price, and people are going to try to negotiate with you. They're, they're going to ask for every contingency um, that they can. And when things come up, they're going to nickel and dime you because they're the only buyer, right? If, if your home's sitting on the market for uh, even a month, which is a long time in in recent history, right? When when buyers are, are looking on the market, everyone's used to this bidding war environment. You know, before before COVID, a month wasn't that long, but now the you know the market shifted, and buyers' mentality it, it, the buyers' mentality is that if the home is sitting on the market for a decent amount of time, you know, like say a month then they're going to think that they're the only buyer out there. They're the only person that wants this property and they're going to try to talk you down from your price and get as much as they can because they have a little bit more leverage now. You know, in my opinion, it's in your best interest as a seller to price it, not underprice it. You don't want to price it too low, but price your property towards the bottom end of the price range that you're at and try to get a good offer within the first weekend or first week. Now there's no guarantee that's always, there's always a risk that maybe you price it towards the bottom end of your price range and you still don't get a good offer right away. Um, but at least you kind of, you know where your home is worth. You know, you didn't overprice it. People aren't going to think that your property is wrong and you can hold out for the right buyer who's going to pay that price and stay firm on your list price. That's what I would recommend for sellers. So let's take a look into the rest of the data here. Actually, Let's take a look at the percentage of original price received a little bit deeper. I apologize for the lag here. I'm uploading another video and it's a little bit it's a little bit laggy because of that. Okay. Percentage of original list price received. So if we look here, single family homes, 97.1%. Where last year around this time it was 100 percent so you know and really it was it was a lot more than that for the most part um but basically you know you were getting 100 percent of list price now it's at 97.1 percent for single family homes i think um you know i still i still think the strategy that i outlined a little while ago is is the way to go regardless of the property that you have condos percentage of list price received has increased year over year and that has to do with the affordability, which we'll take a look at in a second. But if we look at this green line all the way to the right here, tough to see, but I'll highlight the, you know, it says single family and townhomes up here on the right side. That green line just shot straight down from its peak this summer, which is very interesting. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if that continues to drop as we move into the spring market here where there should be more buyers. Um, you know, I, as I mentioned, the market has shifted pretty drastically from certainly from last year, but it's even shifted from where things were in the fall. Now, housing affordability index, this is a great sign. So this is a combination of things, right? Rates were around 5.75% in January. You know, they trended down and then they held there for a few weeks until we got this jobs data, until we got the CPI, until the market, the mortgage market started to predict that the Fed is gonna to continue to hike rates more than they were baking into their numbers. So rates are going back up. We're gonna likely see um, the affordability index drop um, because you know wages aren't increasing that fast. The median home price is not coming back down. So if, if we see rates increase up to the you know 7% range again, which they're at 6.3% now. So it's it's certainly within 7%. We can see affordability uh, drop below this uh, 1.02 or 102 number. Um, you can see it was much more affordable to buy a home last year around this time, even with all the competition. And that's part of the reason why there was so much competition in the market. So that's a brief overview of what's going on in the Vermont housing market, the Northwestern Vermont market specifically, which is where I service. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description for you folks. so You can look at this data for yourself and make your own conclusions of what it's saying. Uh, leave me a comment in the description. I would love to know what you think. Um, as far as buyers, you know, if you're a buyer in this market, I would say pretty similar to, to what I have been saying for, for really the past six months now is the best opportunity are homes that have sat on the market for, for a little while. 
you know, if you can find a solid property that is reasonably maintained and has been on the market for, for longer than a week, that's going to be your best opportunity as a buyer. Um, if it's been on the market for even longer, you know, closer to a month, then you're going to have some room to negotiate um, because sellers are going to start to panic um, and they might be overpriced uh, and you have you have room to nickel and dime them on contingencies and talk them down from their high asking price if they really do want to sell. So that, you know, at the same time as a buyer, if you see something hit the market and it's something that you really want, but, and there's, you know, maybe it's still in the market after a week, but you're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll wait for a month to see if I can get a better deal. You know, you're rolling the dice. You're rolling the dice that another buyer doesn't come in there and, and scoop it up. And at the end of the day, there's just not that many houses around the area. So I, I, I always think it's a good idea to take advantage when an opportunity uh, crosses crosses the table when you come across a good opportunity. So anyway, Lee Morale, Vermont Economic Realtor, all my contact information is listed in the description. Feel free to reach out if you are interested in buying or selling a home here in Vermont. If you're looking in another part of the country, I'd be happy to help you find a great realtor wherever you're looking. Uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.